Hey, this is Anthony from Absolute TV. You can watch Decide and Ride. Welcome to our detailed breakdown of the new Shoei X14 helmet available at Revzilla.com. This is the latest juggernaut to roll off the showy line. This is the X14, new for spring 2016. Showy, you made me wait damn near six years for this bad boy. 2009, we saw the X12 come out. You've skipped the X13, most notably because it's bad luck. And now we land at the X14, which is the North American version of what we saw launch with Marc Marquez, the X Spirit in Europe. Now, at first glance, totally different helmet. I don't have an X12 on the table here today to compare it to but it's completely redesigned, super aggressive, taking all new school manufacturing technology that we've seen the last six years of helmets, and we're applying it here. So again, updated your drag coefficient, updated your aerodynamics. There's a handful of things that from the exterior side really get a step up outside of just the aesthetic. And remember, you're looking at a helmet that's DOT Snell rated, that's designed for the racetrack. It's happiest in the three quarter, in the tuck position. This helmet is happy at high speeds in performance situations. But I'm gonna tell you why it actually is a great crossover helmet with all of the changes. And the big piece for me is the fact they didn't change the price. Six years later, I would expect to at least tack on another $100 for the level of technology that goes into this helmet. They didn't change the price at all from the X12. They stayed in this low $600 range for your base solid colors. That's huge. This is a completely redesigned helmet with big leaps forward, and they're staying at a place where you're competing with an Arai Corsa RX, an AGV Corsa. You're looking at some of the new models that have come out from Bell that are all gonna be that six, seven, $800 plus range. And now we have a showy that ultimately has a handful of race thoroughbred features that stand on the shoulders of the technology of the RF1200, which in my opinion is the best premium to just call it street track, commuting, touring, whatever you want to do with it helmet on the market right now, and you land back here at the X14. Before I dive into the nuances too, I also want to call out that I'm actually about as excited, if not more excited, about what they've changed on the interior of this helmet than anything else. And that's gonna be the modularity, the new cheek pad venting system, the materials they use, and just generally the ability to fine tune it is something we haven't seen really executed well. And we think the execution of the X14 is one of the best that we've seen out of the gates from anybody going into the spring of 16. Now, quick note on fitment, and I'm gonna dive in and break it down start to finish. Fit-wise, it's still gonna be that classic showy fit, intermediate oval, so a little bit longer front to back. I'm an intermediate oval head shape. I'd say if I was a little bit longer and narrower, I'd still be good to go here, but I don't call it long oval, and I don't call it round. Intermediate oval, no surprises with the size chart. Again, from a comfort standpoint, it is a race helmet, so it's gonna be all encompassing around the cheek pads. And remember what I just told you from fine tuning the fit? The big takeaway here is that all four pieces of the comfort liner, which again, I'm gonna pull it apart in a bit and show it to you, all four pieces are replaceable and tunable. You can move them independently, you can get thinner versions, you can fully customize all four pieces that make up the crown of the head in this helmet. We've never seen anyone do that. The other thing that's very cool fit-wise on this helmet is that any connection point for the interior liner actually has four degrees of movement on it. So you can position the snaps in a one or two position, and what it's gonna do is actually gonna slightly rotate this helmet forward. So if I'm riding in the race position, I know I'm just primarily taking to the track, I can actually slightly rotate the interior comfort liner by four degrees. Again, aiding in its fit when you're in the tuck race position with your chin on the tank. So again, we've never seen anybody do that. Bravo showy. Like I said, use a size chart, we ship for free. And what I'd really love is for you to click our logo, subscribe to us at Revzilla TV on our YouTube channel, leave me your comments, your questions, and your really opinion on the changes they made with the new X14. So let's start from the outside in. I'm gonna hit all the changes as we walk through it. Let's start with the shell itself. Again, there's a few key differences going on here besides the fact that they just upgraded it from an aggressive standpoint. So again, big sweeping, integrated wing. You're going to see a vent scheme that makes sense. What they've added now though, the thing that's gonna jump out are these rear wings. You say, oh, is that for aerodynamic profile? Actually, it's not. It's for buffeting. So that's part of aerodynamics. But what they've done, they've in twofold, they've really given this helmet a better chance to reduce buffeting. Now, buffeting is when your helmet starts to shake when you're getting pushed around in your bike, especially at speed. And it takes into account your body position, your height, your windscreen, all of those things. What Shoei's done is they've used the disconnected wings, which actually you can buy a shorter version of as, as well. And these are gonna be screwed on that live underneath this wing. They're also removable. And then they've also used these vortex enhancers. You can see them on along the side here. They're the only other manufacturer that we 
seen use these besides Schubert. They're actually called turbulators. And what they do is they break up the laminar flow or the consistent airflow across the helmet. So when that air is sweeping around the helmet, it actually becomes disrupted and it has less of an effect on the helmet itself. So it will buff it less. So the helmet becomes more comfortable, more stable at speed. They've increased your drag coefficient, or actually decreased it by 10% on this bad boy. And with the new and improved wing, the way that it's been integrated, actually at speed in the tuck, you get a little bit of lift. They've decreased the lift by 3%. So again, from an exterior standpoint, completely overhauled, super aggressive, badass, rah, we like it but very, very functional. Now, when we look at some of the other features here, remember, Snell and DOT rated. So DOT, par for the course. Shoei still believes in the upgraded Snell standard, and what happens is you get some additional belting within the helmet. Now, I will tell you, from a weight-saving standpoint, the new Shoei X14 only uses four shells instead of the previous X12's five. So, in that middle ground where you could have a smaller shell, maybe save some weight, they didn't do that. They did cut three ounces. So you went from around three pounds, 13 ounces, all the way down to three pounds, 10 ounces for the medium that we did measure. Now I will say this, Shoei, if you're listening, I would love it if this is such a race thoroughbred to potentially get it down under that three and a half pound range. Under three pounds, eight ounces in my eyes is, is getting pretty light. Three pounds, 10 is just fine. Again, there's a lot going on here and it is Snell rated. And I will call out the fact that that it's balanced. So we went out and rode in this. And a lot of times if you're in a helmet that starts to get closer to that four pound range, which this certainly isn't, you're really gonna feel any imbalances. Or if you start to feel like it's a high performance helmet that's out of balance, you'll feel that too. The nice part about three pounds, 10 ounces, just like a ride does, credit where credit's due, you're going to get great balance, both front and back. So when you're in the tuck, in the three quarter position, wearing this helmet, the weight sits evenly, both front and back, side to side. So while they might have a couple extra ounces over that three and a half pound mark, it's gonna sit in a place that's going to be comfortable and balanced each other out. You're not going to have any leaning. You're not going to feel it front to back. So they're using that AIM Plus shell that we see across the board in their premium helmets. See it in the RF1200. It's a mixture of fiberglass, organic resins, carbon fiber. Again, lightweight, strong, and reinforced with that secondary Snell standard, which I am a fan of over top of the DOT. And again, the other thing you're going to notice is the way they've worked in the vents. So your five extractor vents, and I'm going to start with the back here. I'm going to give you a shot of the rear wing itself. So again, you have your three extractors across the top. You're going to have your th two extractors underneath the wing. You have your removable winglets along the back. Again, sphere at speed through air creates a vacuum. Again, it's that lift that you want to minimize, but the lift is good for pulling warm, mo moist air out of the helmet. I actually happen to think it looks quite badass there as well. We look at the front. This is one of the key changes on this helmet. I mentioned it very early on. This is the first time that we've seen a cheek pad venting system in any helmet. If we look at it underneath your two position vent that's going to vent to the shield and you have the ability to have it fully open or halfway open, you have this vent right here. This vent actually circulates air through channels that vent to perforated cheek pads. First time, so at speed, high performance situations, keeping you cool means keeps you focused, keeps you safe. You're not thinking about how hot you are. Now you're gonna have the ability to cool your cheeks and get a different a different amount of airflow. Now again, that airflow too coming in, if it's getting anywhere near your temples, your temples are a pressure point. They're where warm blood's gonna come to the surface. If you can cool your temples, you can actually cool a lot of your head. You're really gonna feel the effects of that. Now, if we move up past the shield, I'm gonna come back to the shield. You still have your two possession brow vent or two position brow vent right here. One of my gripes on this helmet is this brow vent could be easier to use. Really tough to find with a gloved hand, but the previous version, they didn't really improve upon it. They kept it low profile. But again, these are going to be brow vents that come in vent directly to the forehead. The other thing you have is on top, this chimney vent right here. This is two position, halfway or all the way open. It's going to vent into the EPS, circulate around your head, and be extracted through the back, kind of ratcheting down the mohawk factor. Now, I will call this out. We did notice the increase in ventilation when we rode in this helmet. Again, they're thinking about making it more or higher performing when it comes to the cooling effect. I will also call out though, we didn't think the X12 was terribly loud. We don't think the X14 is any more or less loud, but if you're wearing this in a race setting, you're probably gonna wear earplugs. And if you're wearing it on the street, again, it's not out of bounds from what we think from a noisy helmet perspective. Keep that in mind. Sometimes when you're adding a lot of vents to a helmet, you might be getting more noise. So take that into account, but we're not worried about it. The other thing I want to call out is the shield. And what I really like about this shield is that it's, it's the showy shield that's becoming standardized across their sportier high-end helmets. So while it comes with a flat race shield that's optically correct, UV resistant, 
It is the same shield shape as you'd use on an RF-1200. So if you wanted to do a transition shield that would work with an RF-1200, you can now put it onto your Shoei X14. Now you might be changing out those turbulators, you might not be getting those vortex enhancing devices, but again, you have that flexibility. The shield that it comes stock in the box is going to be a flat raised shield. Notice we do have tear off posts and I don't have it installed today, but there is a Pinlock Evo Max Vision that's gonna come stock as well. So for just over the $600 mark, you're getting the highest degree of anti-fog. It's going to be better than a coating because ultimately it's creating that dual wall design. We don't have it installed here, but it is in the box. The other big change is the two position or the ratcheting mechanism here. So you'll see the lock down here along the front, positive, and you push it up like that, it's not going anywhere. So giving you that extra safety check for race conditions. Now, strong detents as I move my way up. And what you're gonna notice when I turn it fully to the side here, get rid of that glare, you're gonna see that this base plate is spring loaded. So as I move it up and down, and as it comes all the way down, it locks itself in, creating that positive seal against this big rubberized gasket. So this is again that crossover factor. If this was seven, eight, nine hundred bucks, I'd say the guy that's gonna buy it or gal is gonna be super hardcore. They're gonna be headed for the track, really can't justify the cost. At just over the $600 mark, I think there's a lot of dudes out there that are on badass sport bikes that could rock this every day, depending on what they want to get out of their ride, how they typically ride, and what they're optimizing for. Again, having a great gasket and a great seal not only cuts down on air, but really shields you from mother nature. And keep in mind, if you are riding in a multitude of conditions, you're going to see rain. So it's nice to see that backstop. Now, if I move my way from the outside into the guts, I actually get more excited. And I will tell you that not since the Bell Flex technology or some of the feature changes they made on some of the higher end AGV helmets have I been as excited as what I've seen here on the Shoei X14. Obviously, it's high performance. It's going to have your emergency cheek pad removal system. But as I break this down, you're looking at this intermediate oval shape. There's a chin curtain as well as a harder chin piece that I have both removed. They both come stock with it. What you're going to see is a multitude of features here that make this a just better riding experience and very tunable. So if I pull a cheek pad out, you're gonna see it's this 3D max dry material, wicking antimicrobial super premium. Again, seeing it in the RF 1200. If I turn this to the back, here's where we start to get in some of these really incrementally improved features. Notice the back here, notice these little holes. See that hole? That is our cheek pad ventilation system. That is going to take channels right from the shell of the helmet from this chin vent, and it's going to channel air through the cheek pad in an optimized way to keep you cooler and speed up the evaporative cooling effect. You're gonna be sweating, it's gonna be coming down from around your eyes and your brow, it's gonna be soaked up and wicked away by the cheek pads, and now it's going to be evaporative, evaporatively cool. And remember, sweat, when it evaporates, it's the cooling effect that actually happens as it's evaporating away. So you have the ability to optimize that. The other thing going on here, notice the positioning here of these of the snaps. And they're not super easy to move with the finger, but I can move them. Notice that just ever so slightly move things. Every snap within this helmet is going to have that degree of one position or two position. And when you do them all in concert, it gives you the extra four degrees of rotation around the comfort liner, which allows you to get closer to that race position if you're spending the bulk of your time in this helmet with your chin in a tank. Again, for commuting, sport riding, the off track day, I would say you'd probably wear it in the normal position. If you're really using this just as your race helmet, do that final step. It's gonna give you a little bit of extra rotation and it's going to optimize things. Now, I will say this, I've seen AGV rotate their inner liner. I've seen Bell recently rotate their inner EPS liner outside of the comfort liner. I think that I've seen other helmets on the market that are, uh, that are raising this brow line by a few degrees here to create that line of sight when you're really head down in that race position. That would be one of my only gripes with this helmet is that while they've improved it, you're optimizing from the comfort factor standpoint of the comfort liner, but I think you give a better visibility or call it a better chin on the tank, eyes up visibility. If you're in that position, you're optimizing there outside of the every, everyday rider. I will tell you though that if they did that, they'd be tuning this helmet to be more of a race thoroughbred versus a super high-end race thoroughbred that you'd be just as comfortable wearing on the street. So again, they're finding that fine balance. So maybe less of a gripe, maybe just something to call out that if you're die hard and you need the eyes up as far as humanly possible, there are some helmets on the market that give you that better line, horizon line, call it that. Now, if I pull out my other cheek pad, you're gonna see it's integrated with the neck roll. I'll also call out the original X12 did not have speaker cutouts for a comm unit. Again, thinking about the crossover factor, many riders these days are riding with a Bluetooth communicator device that's, that is connected here on the side. 
You have the ability to do that based on the way that this neck roll is set up. You have the ability to do it that there are now speaker cutaways, so the speakers aren't going to jam. They're not going to get in your ear. And if I reach in here, I should be able to just pull it right out pretty easily. There you go. So the speaker pockets, and it's not just a sticky. It's actually got its own teeth, its own foam. Again. It is intentionally designed so that when it's into it, you're not going to have, it's, it's going to avoid any cavity. Notice the pre-curve here. Notice the fact that I did talk about a race fit here and a race profile. So you have better density, better all-encompassing factor here on this helmet that needs to stay in place at high speed. Now, when I pull out my comfort liner, this is when I get the most excited. Excited about a comfort liner. Who thought it? I'm actually going to pull it out. I'm going to throw this down here to my left for a second. This is your comfort liner. This is what you'd expect to see. 3D Max Dry, a multitude of materials, wicking, lightweight, tuned for ventilation. But here's the wonderment of this. The top of this comfort liner, the brow, and the occipital connection point down here along the back side of your head, that's the cradle of this helmet. And if I start to pull it apart, what you're going to see is that all of the comfort areas that will actually be directly connecting are fully removable and movable. So what I have here is my back, I have my front, which actually has the brow connection piece. And as I pull it out, you're gonna see that it has these areas that are gonna promote airflow, but you can buy different densities, different thicknesses. So depending on exactly how your head is shaped, you can fine tune it. I really love it along the sides. And you'll see that it's super hardcore, micro Velcro, and you'll see how I'm pulling this apart here. You have the ability to adjust it up, down, front, back, Get a thinner piece. They're asymmetrical. It's tuned for your head. When I take this last piece off, you're going to see with what I'm left here. I've seen a lot of executions on this. I haven't seen anybody nail it. Next does it. AGV does it. Arai has its removable cheek pads or its removable five millimeter post. Nobody's giving you this level of tailorment. So again, if you're hardcore, if you're really investing at this level, you can fully customize this helmet, spend a few extra dollars and get a thinner pad for around the crown if you really want it but now you have something that's super specific to you. And before I put this back in, where it's actually gonna put it back over to the side, I'm gonna leave it as is. I also wanna call out that notice, even here on the back, on this occipital piece, you have the two position, four degree rotation element. So again, it's the full, ooh, heavy duty Velcro. It's the full comfort liner that has the ability to slightly tilt forward, or actually slightly tilt back to give you that better race support. Now, if I pull the rest of the helmet down here, you're gonna see it. If I had one other gripe, it would be that I think they could have given you bigger venting channels in the EPS. You know, I think about somebody like Shark, I think some of the other manufacturers that have those 10 millimeter vent holes, they're heavily tuned, but again, you have just a different profile of breathability along the EPS. I don't think it's gonna work against it, I just think it's not something that they said we're gonna change the game on the ventilation scheme on the inside of the helmet. And again, if doing that, you might end up with a slightly noisier helmet, but they could have optimized there. I also wanna pull this to the side here ever so slightly, and I wanna show some of these holes. If you can get in here really tightly, you can see some of the holes around the cheek pad, which are actually actually going to be the holes where the ventilation from this chin vent are going to come out. So remember, they didn't change the price, but they overhauled the helmet. They're giving you a lot of features and a lot of technical upgrades that we've never seen before within the market. You're getting the fully modular comfort liner system, the cheek pad venting system, you're seeing turbulators that previously only Schubert had used, and you're getting a helmet that hasn't changed in price that really can compete with the big dogs from Schubert, AGV, Arai, Nex, any of these super premium Bell helmets that are gonna go up and be considered more race thoroughbreds, you're now gonna potentially undercut them by a few hundred bucks, which is super wild to see, and I'm really curious to see the impact that the Shoei X14 has on the market. The next step in your journey is click the info button on your mobile or your desktop device. Visit the product detail page at revzilla.com, and I would love it if you would read the rider reviews that people buying it, putting it through its paces, racing it, are leaving. I would also love it if you bought one from us, leave your commentary there to help other riders make the best choice. You shouldn't just take my word for it. As always, we'll ship for free over 39 bucks, and if you wanna to talk to a gear geek, see us at revzilla.com or 877-792-9455. Thanks for watching our detailed breakdown. Remember, subscribe to us at Revzilla on our YouTube channel. Stay up to date with our opinion on the latest and greatest in the motorcycle universe. I'm Anthony, we'll see you next time.